Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I welcome you all in this lecture. Today we are going to discuss about the cross-sectional survey. By definition, it means in a cross-sectional survey study, samples of individuals are selected from a previously defined population and contacted at any particular time point in time to simultaneously uh, collect the information on both the exposure and the outcome of our interest. So at any particular time point, we collect that information and we want to assess the frequency of that exposure in the prevailing population. So that's the simplest form of cross-sectional survey study. Let's elaborate this with one example. Uh, the data what you are looking right now in the table is basically the reproductive behavior surveys are uh, done in 40 developing countries and 20 developed countries about the breast feeding practices. So what you are looking over here is the information in Africa about Egypt, Ghana and Kenya. The year of survey was 1980. Sample size, number of women who were collected for and um, participated in this study is mentioned over here. On the uh, right hand column, you can see that the percentage of women aged 15 to 49 years of age and their uh, current breast feeding, uh, feeding duration that is being mentioned in this slide. So, 34 percent percentage women uh, participate and they uh, have uh, participated for the have participated in terms of uh, breastfeeding practices. So this is what you can say continental distribution and uh, over here you can see the values which are substantially higher are Kenya so the Kenyan women have a higher percentage of Kenyan women actually have a breastfeeding practice in contrast to what is we have noticed in uh, Indonesia and in Colombia and Venezuela so the data is being generated as mentioned in this report is 1987 but what we are inferring from this data is the level of our interest that is breastfeeding practices and then we are observing it on a cross-sectional survey base. But sometimes we can add some additional factors in this data. So in continuation to the previous table, if we are interested to know whether the schooling has any correlation with breastfeeding practices, so a correlation among any factor with the frequency of attribute of our interest so the attribute of our interest over here is the feeding factor we are talking about is the year of schooling and we want to know whether increase in school exposure has any association with breastfeeding practices so schooling with feeding practice in months is mentioned over here Again, if we look at the data, it says that the year of schooling is 0, 1 to 3 years, 4 to 6 and 7 plus years. So if we notice, and these are the numbers, the numbers which are mentioned over here are what you can say mean durations in months. So what we are looking 21.2 is the mean duration in months for the Egyptian women who never visited the school have a mean duration in months to feed their kids. So the women who never visited the school have substantially higher proportion of breastfeeding their uh, infants as compared to advanced schooling where we see the numbers are roughly in early uh, 10 number not exceeding more than 10 than 15 at the most but the women who have never visited the school there is a higher proportion of individuals uh, which have which uh, on which the life of their infants dependent more mostly on the breastfeeding okay so such kind of surveys are important to understand the trends prevailing in our population regarding any phenomena this is why cross-sectional uh, surveys are important now the next question is what would be the target population as in the previous slides we have discussed about the breastfeeding practices and we have taken 
the women as a prior advantage but we are not talking about the women who are elder or who are at younger age okay similarly i am giving you an example which says that the dietary habits of seventh day adventitious group is to be important let's say this is an example now this group doesn't eat meat or rely on vegetables and it is localized in usa so should we adopt in order to assess whether how much meat or how much vegetable free life they are going and what sort of disease which is the level of interest we are interested to decipher so in that case uh, our priorities would be should we add recent converts what is the source of population and what is the representative selection criteria for example if i am want to study the association of any disease with punjabi uh, population so the my prime target would be the uh, province of punjab rather than i will be discussing those issues in kpk or balochistan or any other remote area or if i am talking about any uh, particular target population so first target population source of population sample and study participants there is a the core criteria for any cross section study studies now how to select samples samples made by choice of judgment or convenience if i am residing in an area where i can find a lot of uh, male population i can target that male oriented study so it is my choice or judgment now simple random sampling can be done sometimes a systematic sampling sequence based selection for example odd days are meant for boys and even days are meant for uh, women to participate in a study so this is my systematic sampling approach for any question to be addressed in sometimes a multi stage sampling cluster is being defined i am going to elaborate you the multi stage sampling technique over here very briefly now in this example this says that study design diet lifestyle versus seven common cancers in china so in early 1980s a study was conducted in china which was to assess whether the diet and lifestyle has any association with seven common cancers reported in different regions of cancer so the people were interested to know which diet or which lifestyle is uh, the people of have more frequently affected from any particular cancer now this is the china is a big country and in order to conduct this study they use a multi stage sampling approach what was that approach they said that total counties in china were 2392 out of these counties they have selected 65 counties now apparently this is a random number of 65 but the logic behind was that the population residing in these counties should be higher than 100000 people okay so out of these 65 counties they they have selected the they should be covering large geographical area okay so the 65 counties should be evenly or by and large distributed about all regions are covering majority of the proportion of china with the prevalence of seven most common cancer communities selected from each 65 counties two regions were being selected so out of these 65 two communal areas from these 65 were being selected okay so the total falls in 130 region okay though random but focus was to travel time 4 hours to keep them approachable to the communicate survey with a lab station that's fine so out of this a production brigade in each commune was selected so that 130 individuals were being uh, selected from that cohort so out of 2000 counties 65 were collected based on population and then from this 65 communities there were uh, count out of these 65 counties two regions were selected and they were called as communities we can say in our local language mahallas so this the total number falls as 130 from this 130 they say that we have selected two teams or two particular teams and these particular teams were also being doubled so the number starts from 260 so in from that mahalla 
they are going to a street level and they have randomly assigned it to 260 okay out of these 260 big streets they have collected 25 households which are having this representation so 25 households and if we multiply this 25 uh, households were selected from these areas so yielding 100 households per county and 50 per commune so one male and one female were invited for blood donation so people in total were 6500 okay so it's just an overall design what we are trying to focus over here that in order to study a big project you attribute and start something like this for example if I want to replicate the study in Pakistan I would say that the Pakistan is composed of four provinces and one uh, KP, uh, Gilgit Balochistan area so we say that we have five uh, provinces and of these five provinces we say uh, I have collected uh, let's say 10 or 12 big large cities from that cities we go to the uh, what you can say district and then from districts we duplicate that data into two uh, tehsils and from tehsil level we are going to demarcate certain streets and from that streets we are residing into 25 households and then we duplicate those households number for one male and one woman and then we collect that information about their lifestyle pattern and cancer exposures okay in order to assess this on a large scale we are doing it on a very uh, prolonged and lengthy model based study and then not all participants become response fully to the study because of lack of interest they die they refuse or they lost contact or not comfortable at all so some participants are usually at the initial random samples so efforts are made to assess the response level so that we can assess a comfort zone how much individuals are comfortable to talk about any particular issue what we are discussing now the data collection methods usually are the same questionnaires supplemented by a diagnostic test or collection of biological samples most questionnaires include questions about past exposure as well as current exposures okay now in order to analyze the data we can say the first and prime objective of this study is the frequency estimation or we can say the prevalence estimate so let's present this in a form of essay the prevalence of breast cysts and oral contraceptive use is being given out here so we say that uh, there are breast cysts which are observed in women and then we are comparing it with the exposure of our interest which is oral contraceptive use now a total of now a total of uh, breast cancer cysts reported is 201 out of 5 1891 women so if I divide 201 by 5891 I am getting a prevalence that is 3.4 percent I have one written over here but you can estimate 201 divided by 5891 so this is the prevalence of breast cysts in a general population now if I distribute it and stratified it with a additional question of oral contraceptives like I have shown in third slide where I am comparing breastfeeding practice with schooling something similar is going on over here I would say 124 oral contraceptives ever used individuals suffering from breast cyst divided by a total number of breast cyst affected are uh, individuals is going to give us the prevalence of breast cyst among ever users this is 124 divided by 3247 is equal to 3.8%. Now the next is the prevalence of breast cyst among never users. 77 divided by approximately 2644 is equal to 2.9%. Now the prevalence ratio based on this estimate is scoring a value which is called 1.3%. That is the prevalence ratio. Okay now this is the prevalence estimate I'm going to get in order to establish this prevalence ratio we have calculated the value is 1.3 okay and now our task is let's say we want to assess the odds ratio how much people who have used oral contraceptives 
are free from breast cancer cysts or how much who, the people who haven't used oral contraceptives will be free from this breast cyst development and we can calculate the odds ratio too for this the formula would be slightly different it is 124 divided by 77 okay and the value you are going to get is 1.61 and for odds ratio in controls contraceptive oral contraceptive groups it says 3123 divided by 2567 so odds ratio estimation is being done and this value is 1.22 so odd ratio would be exposed divided by odds or ratio in unexposed group so odd ratio in exposed group is the numerator value divided by odds ratio in unexposed group in denominator so our values were 1.61 divided by 1.22 and it says 1.3 is the odds ratio value as well okay so this is the way to analyze the prevalence of cross-sectional survey reports next thing is the advantage and disadvantages for the cross-sectional survey studies advantages are pretty straightforward they are easier to conduct than individual based studies because no follow-up is required provide a good picture of general health care needs of population at a particular time point and can be used to investigate multiple exposures and multiple outcomes at one single time that is interesting Disadvantages is being based on prevalence existing rather than incidence cases, limited impact on etiology because it is not going to help you at identifying any true factor association. It is just going to report the prevalence versus school. It is not going to say that schooling has a deleterious effect on breastfeeding practice. That is not your infer. That is just a social norm what you have reported. Similarly, they are not useful to investigate rare disease or disease of short duration and that's obvious because the duration will always be uh, compromised with this it is difficult to establish the time sequence of events which is the first foremost factor which is responsible i mean whether the factor of our interest has any association with the uh, risk or is not that is difficult to establish in terms of biological levels all right so we can establish uh, something like the lifestyle and diet but we can't say that this kind of diet is a guarantee that the cancer won't happen as a reported in chinese population as well okay lastly thank you very much for your valued time now before concluding this session i am going to give you two more things that is the risk ratio rate ratio and odds ratio have a look on this slide and then do this essay for me please it says that suppose we have 200 medical workers they are working and they are suffering from COVID-19 due to any issue some of them 2000 individuals of them some of them are exposed and some of them are not the question is the exposure says the number initially at risk 4000 number of individuals who died 30 person years at risk that is assuming that on an average all deaths occurred in the middle of the follow-up period this number has already been given to you okay similarly numbers initially at risk they don't are uh, have any risk so 16,000 individuals don't have any risk of a disease out of those individuals out of those individuals certain number of uh, people 16 individuals died so they don't have a corona but they died so the persons here at risk is also given i want you to calculate risk ratio rate ratio and disease odds ratio at your own so that you can get an understanding how such questions would be dealt risk ratio rate ratio and disease odds ratio these are the two homework assignments i am giving you and I, I want you to have a look on these okay and these are the formulas thank you very much for your time and attention if you have any questions please feel free to raise